perhaps it's interesting to tell something more about the definitive construction. This was the preamp that I showed earlier and explained. And now I'm going to build the whole circuit, the complete end amp, one channel and the other channel, and the preamp together. Um, the most important thing is that they must be tested properly, the end and the preamp, with a sine wave generator and an oscilloscope. And the final, in the final mounting, it's very important to avoid ground loops. The ground loops cause a kind of hum that cannot be repaired. And here you see, for instance, all the wiring from the loudspeakers. And I've combined the right and the left amplifier, ground from the right, um, output from the right, ground from the left here, and output from the left. I keep this completely separated, always, to prevent ground loops. Also here you can create a ground loop at your input. When you don't mount uh, the earth wiring and the signal wiring uh, in a proper way. I've marked here the two channels with tape and here are the signal wires, the two signal wires from the CD player. They go to the preamps here and the both ground connections here are, I have combined them. I don't know whether that will work, but I think it will work. Both the minus ground connections are here soldered to the one and only earth point, and that's here. All earth goes to this point, and this point here is connected to the template on the underside from the um, stereo amplifier. So, um, that's very important, prevent ground loops. They cause a kind of hum that cannot be repaired. So you have to search um, your circuit where there is a ground loop and it can be very, very difficult to find out. Anyway, I've told here about in the past about uh, the shielding, the template. Also the template goes here from this location to the one and only earth point here. And I've marked both preamps, one red, one blue, um, to discriminate them very easily. Here again the two uh, amplifiers, positive lead here, negative lead here, and also here the same. I had quite a few problems by aligning the quiescent current from this amplifier took approximately two hours to test it all out, but I decided finally to use a pot meter, potentiometer, and not um, like I did it in the, the other channel, two fixed value uh, uh, resistors. So now I can align the quiescent current and how the amplifier sounds and reacts and also the pureness of the sine wave and the crossover distortion, all is now um, handled by this one and only potentiometer from 4K7. So that's all to tell about this amplifier at the moment. Perhaps I can pick up the schematic. I hope so, yes, here is the schematic. I made a few, not very important, but some mistakes in the, this circuit that I published earlier. Here there's a difference from the first uh, published circuit, 330k and 2m2, and here it's not uh, 33 kilo um, ohms, but 3300 kilo ohms. I think um, 
you can also align the whole circuit when you use the original schematic. But anyway, perhaps it's good to show. And here is that critical quiescent current alignment. Uh, I have a quiescent current from approximately 100 or 150 milliampere. That's quite high. But anyway, you have to pay for a good sound. That's my opinion.